Let's let's start this segment without Jess and Lucy. Let's just start this. Mike, I hear marshmallow ass in here. Yes, this is what it's like. This is what it's like trying to run uh, run a place that has a bunch of creative what, what people in it. Uh, Jessica and Lucy. I gave 15 minutes. They're on minute 25. Yeah. What is happening? Uh, Chris, you can speak to, in the executive producer role, you can speak to the difficulties in rounding this crew and just getting everybody to sit in their seats to do the, the goddamn show from inside the pen. You give an inch, they take a mile. When they walk in here, let's give them the <laughs> silent treatment, they? and then you just start with a ooh, because they are in trouble. Well, they're not going to know they're on air, though, so you got to be careful because they, they're going to be in legitimate trouble, and then they don't know they're on air, and they might say too on, things that are a little too honest. And instead of therapy couch, you're going to hear some things you don't want to hear. Yeah, uh, so I already heard the excuses in my ear. They're stuck in an elevator, which immediately made me feel bad, but I'm like, how likely is that? And it's turned into already, they're waiting for an elevator. So, no, what's happened is they're late. Are they uh, by the pool? Did they go to the gym area? Look, man, it, they... Winter in Miami is lovely. This is this is as good as it gets because it's 60 degrees. And I, I would not bl blame Lucy and Jessica who have been smothered by our heat. They don't – I don't know, man. Our people are not very nice. This is not a friendly town. This is a very unfriendly town. Uh, if they thought that before, wait till a couple minutes from now when they walk in this studio. We already, we're already setting up the shot to just stare at them like the video camera. So okay, I think we so, just go silent when they're about to walk in and we stare. We'll tell the audience, "Are right, here they are. We're going okay, quiet but now. We're so, stare. so that we're going to make it obvious though that they're on the air because I believe we will cause a problem if they come in and we're yelling at them because they're late to start a segment and Mike's doing uh, the dictator stuff that uh, that might not let them know that they're not on air. I'm not being a dictator. I think I'm being very fair. I've given, I mean, a 15-minute break is quite nice. Yeah. Not a lot of people have that in their workplace. I feel taken advantage of right now. We have to create content. There are deliverables here. We have to send content to our partners over at DKN in a certain window, and they're standing in the way of that. Like, we can't do it now. Here we can't here, create here, here, the here, here, here the company. wants to talk to you guys that sounds like a music uh that sounds like a little song you there. guys are in trouble <laughs> Jer well, and i'm not doing that again no uh, i so nice of you guys to join us <laughs> happy to be here all what, right what, what's, what the the what's the problem what happened why, why, why are you, you so late I'm the 24th ranked best media personality in college football. What do you expect? The show from starts me? when Lucy gets here. Okay, oh, really? first of That's all, where we're going. second of all, the elevator banks here oh, yeah. leave a lot to be desired. They do. Some point, technology works against you. Jeremy has an Emmy in his hand. He was here on time. Yeah. Not really. He wasn't on the list no, though. He was also Did late. Did Big Game Boomer give you the Emmy? What is that drink that you have? Matcha. Billy Lewis and I have done tricep workouts in 15 minutes and gotten back here. Not that it's really done much for me, but you we've guys, still done it. You guys I mean, that explains a lot that your triceps are 15 minutes. I don't have a lot of time. That you guys make me do a lot of things. I'm Stop sorry. being mean to everyone. Stop being mean to Lucy. You don't get to turn this Lucy around didn't on me. Do I am anything a, wrong. Yeah, okay. I'm the bad guy because I give 15 minute breaks that you turn into 25. I, I want to. Was it a long line? Did it take a while to get your order? It was, was it a, the elevators. Was I'm it a telling saunter you. back? You know you can walk up the stairs from the. No, lobby. actually, I didn't know that. Yeah, can you show me where the stairs yeah, are next time? The that elevator. would actually help a lot. Yes, there are elevators there. Uh, they're, they're right next to the elevator. The stairs. Does anyone else do the thing where it's like I walk up three flights of stairs every day? That's my exercise. Like I, I look at it like I, when I take the bright line, there's always a cavalcade of people taking the escalator because it's a good like the equivalent of three stories, I'd say, to get from the ground level to where the train is. I walk up the stairs and I just say, this is it. This is my I'm being like, I'm going to that's the decision yes. I'm making today. I'm going to not take the es the elevate the escalator. I'm going to walk up. When and I sometimes lived, I go every other step to get the extra burn. When I lived in New York, I lived on the fifth floor and the fourth floor back-to-back -back years and I have never been in better shape in my entire life yeah. because every day that was my I'd have to carry groceries up the stairs I felt like I was a weightlifter I'd carry my luggage up and down the stairs all the time it was the best workout of my life and I never had to do anything else the that was my weight the problem is I do the train about twice a month yep. it's well. a it's a it's it, that we should do a fitness uh, commercial for you on what it is that you do and your training regimen and you too can have a body like this if you just follow these three easy literal steps.
Here's the thing. Here's what happened. There's so just three steps. There, I love the Elser. Like I, I really do. This place is great. Oh it's beautiful. The fatal flaw of the Elser is that when you're going through the lobby, you have to go outside of the ele- There's two ginormous elevator banks. You have to go outside, scan your thingy, go to the, the floor. So Lucy and I screwed up. We got on. I, actually, the guy might have just buzzed. He might have hit the wrong floor because he, he let us up. He might have hit the wrong he floor. He might have hit the wrong. So we got out on the wrong floor. This and we had like to go all the way out of the bank. We had to go around the corner. And then we were like, oh my God, we're on the wrong. We're on a different level. And we were in the At garage. Any point, we were walking. Did the time wandering matter? Around. Yes. I, look in Slack. I wrote in Slack Lucy and I are stuck in the elevator. Also, Wait a there's sec. a ton stuck of people the here. Elevator? There's a ton of people here today. There's a billion people. You were waiting stuck to get in an elevator? Up. No, we were just like walking around the elevator brings for like 10 minutes because we had to go out and so then we had to go back in and then we had to in wait. An elevator. No, like I said we were stuck waiting for the elevator. Mm. You had your coffee up. Mm. I did just have an espresso. All right, <laughs> let's yes, yes. She's she is uh, let's let's examine so this for a good. second. Wait, you are revving you are revving a little bit. So I do want to ask this question. There was a sen- sentence in there that was the fastest sentence I've ever heard. Yes. Thank you. Um the the <laughs> The coverage uh, has gotten very fast around here. Mina Kimes is talking at a high rate of speed. There were feet around Lucy's head the other day, and we were making her talk at a high rate of speed. But I genuinely want uh, input here, and I genuinely want to understand better because— She sent this at 10—hold on. We have on the TV right now the Slack message that was sent at 1017. (laughs) Just to let you guys know we were safe. Thanks for being worried, by the we way. We were supposed to be back at 10 10. You guys don't even care that we are gone for so long. You no know, one called and asked, Are you guys okay? You guys we are did. all out there we by yourself plenty. on the mean streets. We delayed of Miami. the start for you. We, we just, cared plenty. We just kept saying, Content! I have a lot of blind spots. I do. They've been revealed to me more and more over the you last get a rearview mirror. three years. Uh, well, I, funny you should say that because the Clevelander is in my rearview mirror. Lucy, and- you're just letting Jess do all the talking for you. I'm the 24th best college football personality, according to Big Game Boomer. I don't think I need to defend myself. Stop yelling at Lucy. She didn't do anything wrong. I've never she, done anything wrong, She's ever. just standing idly by while Big Sister takes the fall. I came in and said it was my fault. Yeah, that's true. I need your help. It's I not do- good enough. We have to make content. You have to lie and say it's someone else's fault, Lucy. God, can't believe I have to explain this to you. Jessica and uh, Lucy, I genuinely need your help here because a few years ago, and Jessica, you know how unions uh, work. You are for employee rights. Um, I had a friend who had a business, and he was saying that his youngest and uh, quote-unquote laziest employees were the ones that were unionizing on him. And uh, Now that sounds like a big game boomer yeah. if I've ever heard one. And what I wanted to ask you, though, is uh, because I wondered to myself when he asked me that, I wondered, is, well, is that you getting old or is that that young people are going to change the way the workplace ought to be? This is a content place where Mike Ryan is cracking a whip getting us in here uh, every 15 minutes and stuff. And because that's the job, we've got to produce a bunch of content. We've got DraftKings is a very they've been a very good partner during a difficult time in the media escape. They've been an exceptional partner and we've got to get them these things at this time every day or making more than anybody else makes. Uh, I think we just made 15 minutes of content by being late, actually, Dan. Do not rationalize this. We could have had a conversation about Diddy. All right? And instead, we had a conversation about you being late. Why don't you have Danny Cannell, number 25, come in here and do it then? What should the rules be? What, because, because it sucks to have a bunch of rules and rigidities around trying to make stuff. And I, the one thing I yell more than anything in that room is running back in here, no time for human interaction. There isn't, because we have to hit all the notes. We have guests coming up next, and it's Thursday. And you know what that means? It means I don't have someone sitting in that seat to hit it, so I'm going to get up from my chair right now and make cocaine Jess do the Thursday Thunder. So give me a second. Also, the rules should be sometimes people are late, and it's the Elser's fault. Whoa. I'm just a girl, okay? I'm just doing the best I can. I got my matcha. I'm in a better mood now. Like exactly, everyone needs to Lucy. calm down. I am just a girl. I, <laughs> I, I Thursday do. Thunder presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. Mike. <laughs> Thunder, yes, we're we're doing it. It's <laughs> well, a, I, I the game of the century tonight. Mike, in that Thunder. there might be only it. seven points scored by either team. Who's to say? We have a, a hell of a parlay. It's disgusting. And we're gonna start with Mitch Trubisky, <laughs> Pittsburgh Steelers starting quarterback, under 
180 yards. Pass. <laughs> thunder, thunder, thunder. We also have on our second leg of the parlay, TJ Watt. You think he's going to get a sack tonight? Plus 0.75 sacks for TJ Watt, one of the best defensive players in the league. And finally, we're going to take Ezekiel Elliott with the under in rushing yards at 60. There we go. <laughs> Scary. It's also very cold out today. Maybe a storm's a brewing. 60 rushing yards under. I don't want to watch Ezekiel any of Elliott. that. Thursday Thunder is brought to you by DraftKings Sportsbook. You can follow this parlay on DraftKings Sportsbook app. What kind of advertisement is that for the game? If all of the shows everywhere are infomercials for what's coming up next Color on Rush. ESPN. <laughs> they haven't done Color Rush in a while. I think it's the throwback uniform. I'm telling you, there's something nice about placing a bet and not watching the game. I love a good just check the phone about halfway through, see where we're at. I'll tune in late if it's close, but I like I like just making a bet and checking in on it. Me and, my, and that has this game written all over it. That's true. I, I will be watching it. Me and my besties for the primetime games, we've been doing a group parlay every week. And if we win, we will do a very nice fancy dinner the next time they're in Miami. Mm. Bringing the whole friend group together, Dano. Hopefully they don't count on you to show up on time. Or to make the parlays, because <laughs> no, I'm I, not good at them. No, so th- th- <laughs> Except this one. Woo! No, I, 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 <laughs> This is not the best. I believe I, this is the problem. It's windy in here. Do you realize that all around us at DraftKings Network, you have touts who know what they're talking about and are taking these games seriously and giving a lot of information. And we are making these bets, and they're sloppy, and you're telling people, I'm not going to watch the game, and you accompany it with, you know what my expertise is? I couldn't get over to those buttons, so I'm going to make a thunder sound poorly, and I'm going to try and join you to help out, and I'm not confident around the thunder sound. No one's had a better segment than Lucy just reiterating time and time again she's number 24 and just a girl. I'm just a girl. I don't know what you guys are expect from me <laughs> someone dm'd me the other day sure hope you'd be okay with mike ryan calling you his daughter in the presence of your probably hot mom because you know equality something tells me it wouldn't fly i was like my mom says thank you <laughs> I, th- I i thought we should put a golden bachelor together for Mike Ryan's dad. He was so oh. handsome, but it's been scrubbed from the internet. Yeah, it's weird how that happened. I don't know. My dad was texting me and my wife was texting me, well, we want to, Julia wants to see Abu and, and your dad's bothering me about where to find it on the internet. I'm like, I don't know. It disappeared. And that's not usually how things happen. Weird. I'll send an email. We have to figure out how to uh, create a podcast segment. Uh, let's find Mike's mom. We have to figure out how, found her. how to do that. <laughs> Uh, David Sampson and Adnan She's Burke dead. are no, don't do that. It took a dark turn. David Sampson, nothing personal. Like Caballero from- Woodlawn. <laughs> I can walk you there if you'd like. Call you Abu though. Abu wants an Abu. That's what I called my grandfather. Is that that's a that's yeah? A- well, my dad was born in Havana, so some tradition stay. Adnan Verk has a very good guest on Cinephile, I was told. Uh, David is here. Look at him. Look at him gloating. He's, he's, look how happy he is over there. Uh, uh, go ahead, Adnan. Tell the people uh, what, what is on Cinephile and how you got a big-name guest. Dan, he may only be the biggest stand-up comedian in the world right now. Sebastian Maniscalco, not on Nothing Personal, not on the Dan Levitard show, but somehow, some way on Cinephile. And my understanding is that Listen, David's podcast is doing very well numbers-wise. The Levitard show is enormously popular. But Sebastian said, you know what? I want my pick of the litter. I want someone who sees things the way I see things. I want someone who appreciates cinema the way I do to promote my show, Bookie, on Max. I'm taking Verk. So 30 minutes of Maniscalco. We talked to Irishman. We talked about my father. Not my father, but Robert De Niro, the film he was in. It was amazing. Samson, you're going to love it. David? Do you have a booking agent? Um, yes, I was going to play the fifth, but yes, I do, David. What are you okay. doing, David? What no, are we're, you... we're, we're, we're under the, we're under the metal arc media. I'm sure that our talent booker can help you as well. You're telling me you haven't, no one's reached out to you as far as it. Well, oh, no, okay. no, no. Okay. okay. That's, 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 that's what I'm telling well, you. No, <laughs> look, all right. Let me, let me say something here on behalf of David Sampson, who the, 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 the poor guy is busting his ass and there's so little gratitude around what's happening right now. I saw the press release yesterday. Of, <laughs> this is almost too unbelievable to believe. 
Um, I saw the press release yesterday for all the smoke and Levitar and Friends Network, and I just see a text from David. Hey, did you guys purposely omit my name from the press release? <laughs> and and no, it wasn't purposeful. It was an afterthought. And now you're here on Cinephile, and you're saying that you're getting a guest, and David doesn't even know that we've got a guest booking agency helping us with that. David continues to get disrespected in a way that's now starting to make me really uncomfortable. It's actually a contractual provision in our deal that there is a booker who Metal Arc has who would be booking for Samson sit downs. And I have been told that the booking people are not available to help for nothing personal. So it's fine. I use my Rolodex when I can. But Adnan comes on here, you know, hoity toity, <laughs> talking about all these guests and Pablo Torre. God knows how. I mean, Larsa Pippen. <laughs> David, this is what you think of the guests that we have. By the way, you just saw the holdovers, as did I. Oh, look at this. I got this. I got this soap sent to me with like sayings yeah. from the holdovers: snarling Visigoths, genuine troglodytes, rancid Philistines. That's what he thinks of Metal Arc Media. Everybody, that's what Samson thinks. The holdovers now in theaters. Do you have to show the free swag that you get from all the movies that I love, watch and review? That somehow you're on a mailing list, like LL Bean. Maestro of screenplay, if you want to check it out. Uh, excellent screenplay to read. Bradley stop. Cooper, it's really got sent to me as well. Really good stuff there. Please American stop. Fiction. I got a ca Christmas card sent to me from The Holdovers, Alexander Payne. You uh, you reviewed The Holdovers in a cinephile episode. I'm very curious uh, to know your thoughts on that because I've uh, been very interested in this movie just from the ad campaign. It's a throwback ad campaign with an actual voice explaining the trailer as it's happening. I was a big fan of how it was mar being marketed. What is Samson laughing about? What Samson? What's the matter? I did a seven minute review on nothing personal, Mike, of The Holdovers. No, no, he, he needs my review, Mike. I, I, would I love her ad nans. <laughs> <laughs> It's fantastic. Mike. He has so point. It's set in the seventies, and they want to get that seventies vibe. So you're right. The trailer was mimicking what you'd expect out of a character-driven movie from that era. Masterclass from Giamatti, resounding return of form for Alexander Payne after the misstep of downsizing. You know what a great filmmaker he is. Not just Sideways, but The Descendants and Elections. So it's a terrific film, Mike. You'll love it. But I'm sure the seven minutes that Samson did was much, much yeah. better. In fairness, David, your thoughts on the film? Three seconds or less. <laughs> I liked it. All right. Let's do top fives. Uh, uh, there, I'm just shocked. I'm shocked right I could have given way more than that in seven seconds. <laughs> yes. <laughs> can we discuss for a second? Can we discuss for a second that Jessica and Lucy had no idea who Sebastian Maniscalco is? Oh. I, I'm just like, not. I, I get it. You might not be a big fan, but just they were like, who is this person? Looked him up. Never seen him that before. He's not for us. Not, not That's the young crazy. people. He a big game boomer? Big game boomer. He's not on the a list. A lot of my wife stuff. I know that was Borat, not him, but still. <laughs> he didn't want to do Italian, so he just did the non-offensive Borat. That's exactly what happened. <laughs> but it's not. Borat, also offensive. Eh. <laughs> Play around with it. Um, uh, you guys, I, I need your help with something because David's discontent is not a joke. Like He, he launched the merch store here unpopularly earlier this week. Uh, you can still get discounts. Uh, Samson Sucks 20 is the... Uh, code it's levitardaf.com and it's a 20 percent discount 20 what 20 percent 20 percent discount excuse me uh, but you can also buy 20 shirts but samson the disrespect is real i'm beginning to feel bad for you it is not intentional you you know good and well it's not intentional when you text me both at 3 a.m and 804 a.m i view that as intentional you're taking that we are disrespecting you as a company again and again uh, by just uh, purposefully neglecting you and and not neglecting Pablo Torre, for example, in New York. Well, I would just say that you're in violation of the contract is what Oof. I would say. Man. I can direct you who to send your emails to. <laughs> and they will promptly be ignored. <laughs> That's how that one happens, isn't it? Uh, uh, what is the list you guys are doing today, David? So today is December 7th, and it's Pearl Harbor Day. And so we wanted to do a top five list of war or war-related movies. And uh, Adnan, how are you feeling about your list? Because I, we were talking in here the other day about Dunkirk for some reason. And I, a, fil a film of that scale, I, I just don't know how you can't be impressed by that movie, even if you don't like that movie, just to see something that grandiose. Uh, but how, uh, Adnan, how is your list likely to differ from David's? 
Uh, I think mine's is just better, Dan, and um, more current. And I think it's it's something that will hit hit a little harder without even knowing my list. Is that just your default? Do you have that written in your notes of your phone? What to say about David's list Thursdays? No, I'm just resoundingly confident, David. My list will be better than yours. That's just how it goes. Uh, Number five. Number five, David. Go ahead. Three Kings. Three Kings is a 1999 movie by David O. Russell with George Clooney as they tried to get gold that was stolen during the Persian Gulf War. Mark Wahlberg's in it. Ice Cube's in it. It really is outstanding, both in humor and in seriousness. That's why it's my number five. Good That's a soundtrack. Great. Definitely a good movie. A little under the radar. I like it. It's, it's a, a great good call. Yeah, I like that movie. Number four. Lord of War. Also a good choice. Have Lord of War is with Nicolas Cage, and it's come back to the forefront just recently because the Lord of War is the guy who we exchanged for Brittany Griner. That's a little side note. Tom Brady's ex-wife is in the movie Bridget Moynihan, as well as Jared Leto. Outstanding performances all the way around. And what this guy did and how we are all implicated in global war would shock you. It's pronounced Leto. Leto. Other than that, pretty good. <laughs> Number three. Inglorious Bastards. If only this had been how it ended. Quentin Tarantino, Brad Pitt. It is a movie that is often overlooked, I think, with the performance that is the greatest potentially supporting actor performance in the history oh. of movies. Yeah. Maybe the greatest start to any movie ever made. It makes my list at number three. In your review, you point out the flaw of the movie, which is that it's never as great as that first scene. The first scene's outstanding, David. I couldn't agree with you more. It's perfect in terms of the economy of scale, the dialogue, the directing, the reveal that they're in the basement. Of course, Christoph Waltz ordering milk. But after that, I don't think the rest of the film is nearly as sharp as that opening. I think it's a little bloated. I think it's a little self-indulgent. Mike's heard my criticisms of Tarantino before. I, I, I don't think it's overlooked. I think it's looked where it should be, which is it's good. It's not great. It's certainly not the number three best war film of all time. Number two, Schindler's List. It's not uplifting, and I will say that I've watched Schindler's List only one time because I didn't want to watch it a second time, but it's a movie that especially in this day and age, everybody should watch because it is true that not everybody is anti-Semitic. Schindler's List with Liam Neeson before he was this crazy action hero he played the starring role in this, maybe the most important movie Spielberg ever made. I'm not going to knock Schindler's list. Ray Fiennes is great too. I think it would be very difficult. It's for a good list. No, it's a good list. The whole so far, you don't stumble here, David. So far, your list is fine. Like there are no objectionable things on your list. But Give number time. number one, the greatest war movie I've ever seen, and I don't think it'll ever change, is Saving Private Ryan. <laughs> You know what? Good David? list, David. Good list. Whoa. Good list. Look at that. <laughs> Adnan's wow. so mad. Let's see, Adnan. Let's see what you got now. Per, the, per uh, tradition, uh, Adnan has 90 <laughs> seconds on the clock to give his full five. I, I'm a little flummoxed by the standing ovation there by the shipping containers. So here we go. Number five is the film that I think is better than Saving Private Ryan. Came out the same year. Maybe it's a little more esoteric, but it's the thin red line. Great film from Terrence Malick, incredible cast, Sean Penn, Nick Nolte. Saving Private Ryan certainly is notable, but Thin Red Line was beautiful and poetic. Number four, good morning, Vietnam. Robin Williams, rocking from the Delta of the DMZ. He's never been better than this film. Barry Levinson, also some drama. Forrest Whitaker as well, really funny movie. Number three, I mean, they went right into the heart of the jungle. Francis Ford Coppola, Apocalypse Now. Good choice. Rye the Valkyrie sequence, incredible. That helicopter assault, unforgettable. Number two, it's the greatest war film of all time, arguably. Oliver Stone's Platoon. And number one, since Amin El Hassan was really offended that David and I didn't give this movie enough love, although we both had it in our top five Ben Stiller movies, the number one war or war related movie is <laughs> Tropic Thunder. I'm better than I'm better than yeah. That's why you get the prime guess. Yeah. <laughs> See you later. Just want to point <laughs> out, you, Moneyball David. could be considered a war movie because oh. wins above replacement. Jeremy, leave. Oh, get Jeez. out! Jeremy, just well, leave my... Joke. And I don't mean the, the studio, joke. I mean my life. <laughs> that's a good joke. That's not even war-related. Wins above replacement, David.
Oh, David, you can oh. go with him for oh, not getting right it. Right over his head. <laughs> See you later. Could have said a league of their own, also. Jess said a lot of things no, go I over didn't. his head. <laughs> no, oh, come on, a short <laughs> joke, Mike. Seriously, it wasn't me. It was Jess and Lucy. <laughs> That's Lucy. Jess. I'm just a girl, David. <laughs> be and you're not than allowed to be mean jokes. to me because I'm just a work. girl. <laughs> He's talking to a guy. Goodbye. Bye, guys.